When did you first hear that Incesticide was like coming together? I read that Chris gave you a call and asked if you had any other songs. Like, is this is this correct? Like, how did the process start with getting Incesticide together? They needed a record after Nevermind. They needed something to be out that year. And they didn't have, they weren't ready to make a new record yet. They just weren't. Mm-hmm. You know, as you can see by, you know, in October of 92, they only had six songs ready. So they weren't ready to record until the following year. But the label was asking, they said, okay, we've got to capitalize on this. You know, never mind, blew up, it's huge. We need to put something out. So someone made the decision to gather all the singles and B-sides and unreleased material together uh, as kind of a stopgap. And I may have made the call myself to remind them that I had an outtake from Bleach sitting on the shelf which was big long now. Or possibly Chris called me and asked me what I had. Uh, but I remember specifically bringing that up because they had forgotten about the song entirely. Mm. Um, so that's the best of my recollection right now. I don't remember who made the phone call, but I do remember that I did have to remind them that it existed and it got added to the very tail end of Incesticide, because that's the last song on side two. I don't even really consider that a compilation record, even though it is. Like, to me, I just consider that part of the um, chronology of Nirvana releases. For you, how do you compare Incesticide to Bleach? Do you, which record do you prefer, if you prefer one? Well, I prefer Bleach, because Incesticide really feels like two different records to me. It feels like half of the Dale Crover record on side B, and then some later odd stuff on side A. It serves... To me, Incesticide is a little bit, doesn't quite cohere because the Dale demo stuff is so different artistically from all the stuff on side A. You know, Sliver and and those other tunes uh, are much more sort of pop tunes. To me, uh, as as a record collector geek, I always think in terms of like the 10 songs from the Dale demo, including Pen Cap Chew is the song that, where the tape ran out. Yeah. Um, I would have taken all those 10 songs and just called that Nirvana album number zero. I would have taken Bleach minus Floyd the Barber and Paper Cuts and put Big Long Now and Blandest on there. And then you could say, you know, and maybe the song from Sub Pop 200 and you could say, okay, here's the entire Bleach session. Uh, and here's album number one, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But that's not how things ended up. So, you know, various songs from various sessions are scattered across these different releases. And it's it, to me, it's a little strange trying to get a feel for when things happened, when you've got some songs here and some songs released years later, and some songs on the box and some songs on, you know, Utero Deluxe and whatever. But that's how these things wind up. You know, you can... <laughs> You can refer to the Hendrix estate for this kind of confusion as well. <laughs> yeah. um, people decide to release things at different times. Incesticide was released by DGC Records on December 14, 1992. Nevermind was released on September 24, 1991. And In Utero was released on September 13, 1993. Thus, Incesticide was the record which gapped the bridge between Nirvana's second and third studio albums. Now, two years in between studio albums is not a very long time, but as Jack mentioned, considering Nevermind had blown up, it made sense for there to be another release before too much time passed. Incesticide consists of 15 songs, these songs having been recorded at various points throughout the years. Several of the songs on Incesticide had already been out on various other Nirvana releases. As a matter of fact, 9 of the 15 songs on Incesticide had already been released. Only 6 of the songs on the record had not previously been released. The six previously unreleased songs on the record are Hairspray Queen, Aero Zeppelin, Big Long Now, and the Made of Veil studio versions of Been a Sun, New Wave Polly, and Aneurysm. This most recent interview I did with Jack and Dino was my second interview with him. Here's a clip from my first interview with Jack, where he discusses how some of the material he recorded with Nirvana ended up on Incesticide. How did your relationship start with Nirvana? Um, I'm pretty sure they heard some of the early Soundgarden recordings I had done which ultimately became the Screaming Life record. Nirvana Um, heard that EP? Yes, I think they would have heard that. They would have heard the Screaming Life EP, uh, which I think came out in late 87. I could be wrong, but I think so. Um, They called me in 1988, January 1988, and... uh, 
Kurt called and he just wanted to come up and record a few songs, you know, make a demo basically. And they didn't have a band name. And uh, Dale Crover was playing drums with him at the time, just as a fill-in drummer. They didn't have a permanent drummer. And of course, Dale knew me. I'd known the Melvins for quite a while. Skinyard had played with them a few times. Um, and Kurt, of course, being from Aberdeen, didn't know a lot of people in Seattle at the time, I don't think. But Dale probably, I'm thinking Dale maybe gave me a, maybe gave me a recommendation. I don't really know that. But Dale knew what I was doing and knew my band and knew the records I was making. And also, I'm pretty sure that Kurt heard some of the Soundgarden recordings I'd already done. At least so I've been told. You know, again, the internet, there's a lot of information out there. Make what you will of it. Um, but in any case, he seemed to know that, uh, that I was the guy he wanted to record with right then. So they came up and recorded 10 songs with me, um, on January 23rd, 1988. And we recorded and mixed all 10 songs in five hours, basically one afternoon. And some of those songs in that actual form. And I mean, you know, I spend about an hour per song. No, half a, no, let me think 15 minutes per song mixing those songs. Cause I think we mixed the 10 songs in, you know, just over two hours. Um, those mixes are the ones that ended up on incesticide. <laughs> really? Yeah. Which always made me think, gee, you know, I, maybe if I'd, you know, if somebody gave me a chance to, you know, spend an extra, 10 minutes, two or three hours, you know, <laughs> maybe those mixes would be even better than they are, but they're not bad mixes. They're all right. Uh, you know, I knew what I was doing at the time, so they don't sound bad, but, um, you know, I, I know I could have made them a little bigger, beefier or whatever, but eh, nobody complained. Did you know that they went ahead with, um, like the label went ahead with making incesticide? Were you notified of this? Yeah. Later on, of course. Yeah, of course I was, they, I, I was, and you know, they just went ahead and used it, and yeah, I had nothing to say about it, I, they'd already made the decision. Incesticide's track listing goes as follows, Dive, Sliver, Stain, Been a Sun, Turn Around, Molly's Lips, Son of a Gun, New Wave Polly, Beeswax, Downer, Mexican Seafood, Hairspray Queen, Aero Zeppelin, Big Long Now, and Aneurysm. Thanks for watching, guys. If you like what you see, make sure to subscribe for more. All the videos on this channel are original. I'm the one conducting all the interviews and editing all the videos together. So if you guys like what you see and you want to support, the best way to do so is honestly just to subscribe. Lots more to come.